coast to coast right around Australia, welcome to Chris Conroy's World of Boats. Hi, welcome aboard. I mentioned a couple of weeks ago when we were looking at John Eager's new 41 foot cat, that Australian boat designers and manufacturers are looking at moving the boats themselves offshore. In other words, giving relatively small boats a definite and safe offshore capability, not only from the point of view of handling rough seas and all that sort of thing, but also perhaps even having the range and performance to handle coastal passages. Now, definitely a case in point, and one that we've looked at in some detail over recent months, is the Kevlar Cat organisation. The largest boat in their range is a 28 footer, and she's not only capable of, of coastal cruising, but she's also an excellent pocket game fisherman. So let's have a look at the biggest boat in the Kevlar Cat range, the 28 foot Flybridge. You know, the quest for better performance comes in many areas. Economy became pre a premium consideration in the 70s uh, when the fuel crisis arose. And manufacturers and designers looked for power plants and for hulls which would be driven at moderate or reasonable speeds on relatively low horsepower. The other aspect of handling and of performance is in the way in which the boat will steer and will ride in rough water. Now, obviously you can, you can look at a a, a wave and you can look at the way in which a, a standard design of boat meets a wave and you can come to some conclusions as to how you could improve that boat in order to make it go better. And the manufacturers who've done that, who've done it over a period of time and who haven't been afraid or have been able to afford to modify their plugs and moles are the manufacturers who've come up with boats that do fulfil the criteria and which do sell and Kevlar Cat is an excellent example. The basic de design of this boat was laid down five or six years ago. It's been modified and refined not only in the original 20 foot size, but also new lines, etc., and new additions to the underwater shape of the hull have been made as they've gone to various sizes in the range. And they've expanded the range now from the 17 footer, which we saw a couple of weeks ago on Welder Boats, and which is probably one of the most spectacular releases on the Australian boating scene or the trailer boat scene anyhow. Uh, during 1988, right up to the boat that you see here, the 8.2 metre Flybridge. Now, uh, this boat is, is most interesting in that it's extremely versatile. In fact, they have what they call a magnum version of this hull, which we, we'll be looking at in some detail in the near future, which simply has uh, a, a cabin on it, or a, a wheelhouse if you like, and is set up as a straight offshore sports fisherman. In the case of this particular boat, the Flybridge, she is set up and designed to be a pocket game fisherman. She's, she has all the attributes of a game fisherman. She'll sleep four people. She has a 400 nautical mile range with her two 200 uh, duoprop Volvo diesels. And she has uh, extreme versatility as far as horsepower is concerned. You can go from twin 150 horsepower outboards right up to twin 350 horsepower petrol stern drives. And included in that range are outboards up to say 250 horsepower and diesel or petrol stern drives right through the power range. So you can power your boat to, to do the job you want it to do and to do it for whatever cost you want, to, you want to do it for. Most interestingly, because it's a Kevlar cat and because the boat is made out of Kevlar, giving that 20% or so saving in hull weight, the top speed uh, with the two uh, 200 duoprop Volvos is in the vicinity of 37 knots. Cruise is 29 knots at 3,000 revs per minute. By the way, the top speed comes at 3,600. 29 knots cruise at 3,000. Now that suggests with two 200, you can go to two 350 that this boat in the configuration in which you see it here would be capable of a genuine 50 miles an hour with two 350 horsepower petrol stern drives and boy you'd certainly get to the fish in a hurry with that sort of performance. Uh, I've mentioned that she has an overall length of 8.2 metres or 28 feet, a beam of 3.3 uh, metres or just on 11 feet. She ha accommodates four in a double cabin down under the foredeck and a convertible dinette she has a shower, a toilet and a full galley, of course essential for creature comfort uh, when you're looking at 400 nautical mile uh, 
mile passages. She, uh, the dinette I've mentioned, she has a, com a, a space for a freezer. Again, essential with 400 nautical miles and a, a cruise speed of around 30 knots. You can expect to, to be at sea for probably 15 or 16 hours. It's essential that you be able to freeze your catch so that it won't spoil by the time you get home. She's also equipped, interestingly enough, with shore power, which means that uh, it's anticipated by Kevlar Cat that she'll be moored on one of the many marinas which have been built and are being built up and down the coast. So shore power is a great asset. It means you can put uh, ordinary 240-volt uh, stoves and ovens and microwaves and, and even washing machines, if you like, in the boat. Most interestingly, she has flush engine hatches. Now, the Volvos are fairly deep, uh, but because of the overall size and depth of this boat, you can walk around in the rear cockpit without stubbing your toe on the edge of the engine hatch, and she has automatic bilge pumps. Now, I suggest that the 28-foot uh, Kevlar Cat flybridge is pretty well state-of-the-art as far as practical power tunnels are concerned in this country at the end of 1988, and it's going to be very interesting to see what happens during 89 and 90 with developments and refinements on this excellent basic idea. And if the gentleman in the slouch hat looks familiar, regular viewers of World of Boats and regular viewers of Australian television over the last 20 years or so will recognise Tom Richards who is uh, becoming more and more uh, dedicated to boating. In fact, Tom visits quite regularly and I suspect that during 89, Tom will bite the bullet and buy himself something a little bigger than a wave ski. He really seems to be getting involved in boating. Nice to see. We'll be back right after this break. <laughs> 